Hello world, how's it going? So today I am here in around Pittsburgh, somewhere in PA. It was it was a crazy crazy pass. You got to pass all over the place in this state. Mm -hmm. But I'm here with Tanner of Serpa Design. He's got all kinds of terrariums, paludariums, vivariums, aquariums, all kinds of ariums <laughs> all over the place, and they're really cool. His art of them is absolutely amazing. And some of you guys may have heard of them before. Um, and yeah, we're going to do a little tour and share a bit of it with you guys. And he's going to tell us some stories and all about that. So let's do this. Signs and stuff. Hi right, Tanner, so you want to start us off here? Yeah, we'll come over here. I'm probably most well known for making terrariums. This is a new rack that I just built. It's uh, two by threes and some common boards. And uh, it's still a work in progress, but I had to get it up so we could have all the terrariums over here. And I have videos on how to build all of these. If you want to know how to make terrariums, definitely just hit up my channel. I got all kinds of tutorials on there, so I'm not really going to talk about the construction of any of these. So we'll probably be redundant. Um, but some highlights here. This is actually a lamp. Like I wired the lamp and everything, and there's a thriving terrarium in here. Everyone a light. Hook it up onto that. This one's pretty cool. It's a, I believe it's five gallons. I got it at a thrift store for, I don't know, maybe like nine dollars. I haggled the guy. And it has cool different plants in here. This one, this little vining plant here, it's one of my favorites. It's uh, Ficus pumula quercifolia, or its common name, oak leaf creeping fig. I just think it adds a really cool texture to terrariums, and uh, it, it seems to be a favorite on the channel, so I'm always um, up for that. This one over here is a native terrarium, so what it's comprised of is... All, only materials that are local here in PA, so the substrate, the rocks, the plants. This is actually a rattlesnake fern, and it, it works really well in terrariums. So I've actually propagated it, and I use it in some of my other setups. Um, but it's pretty cool because you can all that you have to get is a container, and you can make everything um, just from what you have laying around. Yeah, that's gorgeous. And while I'm on native terrariums, this one's actually pretty cool. This one I made totally free. So I didn't I didn't spend a cent to make it. This was actually a pasta or spaghetti jar from dinner. Yeah, oh, I and, see it, Prego, yep. And uh shout out to Prego. Yep. Where's my money? Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I really like this one. It grew in kind of nuts, but it has some liverwort here, sphagnum moss. This I don't know, this little goofy piece here. Uh, it, it's out of place, but I think it's kind of funny just because nature it is, does its, it's own different. Thing. Yeah, and it's got a nice contrast too. Uh huh. And I think that's, that, cool. th that's one of the things I like about terrariums. Like you set them up, and uh, they just kind of take on a life of their own. Yeah, this one's beautiful. That's actually the oldest one on this rack. My fiance and I built it whenever we first started dating. Or it was actually probably shortly after we started dating. It's about five and a half years old. So it has some solid age to it. And this fern back here, it's actually a pretty rare plant. Uh, I can't remember its full name, but it's just commonly known as Susie Wong. Hmm. And uh, you don't commonly see them, but it's a really cool fern. Very neat. This one's really cool. I don't know where the cord is, but it's actually a levitating yeah, terrarium. Yeah, I saw your video on that. Now, you guys, he's got these builds for, like, all these. This, like, levitates up off the ground. He's got awesome, awesome videos on this stuff. Like, these are terrariums inside of terrariums inside of terrarium. That's <laughs> inside of terrarium or something like that. He's got builds on all that. Definitely check out these builds. And I know it's not entirely aquarium related, but it is still kind of related all to mother nature and i mean you kind of get the same idea i mean if you had aquatic plants and added water into it you can kind of still get those sort of effects yeah. you know yeah and what not to divert your uh what you're saying but on the topic of that most aquatic plants will actually work really well in terrariums because uh 
if, if you ever notice, like, whenever you put a plant in an aquarium and it has to have that acclimation period, most of the time they're grown out of water, and then you put it in the water and it has to adjust to that type of environment. But in this one, I have uh, Anubius Nana Petite, and that's, like, honestly, that's one of my favorite terrarium plants. It just works so well, and uh, it's one of my favorite aquarium plants, too, so there's definitely a lot of crossover between the two hobbies. And it looks beautiful in there. Thank you. And he does have aquariums too. Yeah, yeah. I actually started, I was keeping aquariums long before terrariums. Um, this is our new beta. I haven't named him yet, but he, he just had a ton of personality to him, looked real mm -hmm. healthy. Uh, and I actually got another one with him, but it, it had some kind of illness and passed. But this guy, he's he's going strong. I love the color on him mm -hmm. and how he shimmers. And this guy is really cool. <laughs> yeah, this is MJ, uh, an American bullfrog. I raised him up from a tadpole. So they're a tadpole for a good four years, I think. And I've had him for about 12 years. So he could be upwards of 16 years old. And <laughs> there's a little cricket on his head right now. Oh, well, there is. Just sitting right on his head. Look at that. And he hasn't done it since we moved into this house. But normally... Uh, er, early spring and around this time of the year, like early fall, he likes to croak a lot. Um, but right now, he's not doing it for whatever reason. So he will croak and talk? Yeah, yeah. Well, you'll like hear him throughout the house just like, mm, mm, mm. like it's real loud. That's but, wild. Yeah, it's cool. And uh, uh, a lot of people will comment like this tank is too small, and it definitely is. As we move over to the other side of the room, um, I'm working on a new setup for him, so... Uh, we can talk about that once we get over there. Awesome. Over here, uh, this is a 125. I got it on Craigslist. I don't know how, I was probably about 14 at the time I got it, and I had my first job at the time, so I wasn't made of money, but I got it for 90 bucks, resealed it and everything, and this was, uh, MJ actually used to be in this setup, because I kept him with the fish when he was a tadpole, and in here we have Houdini, my king snake. Do you want me to get him out? Sure. Okay. Yeah, cool. I don't know if you're. Oh, yeah, you're saying you. And uh, for some of you guys who may have already seen his channel, and for those who haven't, this used to be a epic, epic terrarium. It was absolutely gorgeous, just full of plants. Big reason why you're redoing it is the glasses kind of had its age and. Yeah, and I don't even know how old the the aquarium is. I bought it from some guy. He said it was a uh, Malawi reef tank, and he could have had it for ten years. I've had it for, you know, a good 12, 12 plus years. So who knows how old it actually is? But this is uh, Houdini, a blotched king snake, and he's around the same age as MJ, slightly older. And when I bought him, he's probably about the size of a pencil. And uh, he actually got his name Houdini because I wasn't very experienced at keeping snakes at the time. So he got out of his aquarium. I didn't find him for a good five weeks. And my dad actually found him outside under a trash can. <laughs> what? So, and Made this, it out of the house and everything? Yeah. Wow. And this type of snake doesn't live around here. So I knew for sure it was him. Um, and this isn't. I don't really think this is a naturally occurring morph. I think it's only bred in. So mm. for sure it's the same snake, but he's pretty cool. Uh, very docile. If you're looking into getting a snake, king snake is definitely a good uh, beginner snake, along with corn snakes and whatever, but he, he's pretty cool. Yeah, seems really chill. Mm -hmm. I don't hold him as much as I would like to, uh, but I, I try to at least once a week just so that... Uh, he keeps to socialize. Yeah, it doesn't get feral on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but, I mean, his, his setup, I want to do something more in, in line with my other setups, like live plants and stuff eventually. But uh, right now, I'm not really too sure what, um, what I want his forever home to be because this is definitely not it. He appreciates the length, though. It's pretty uncommon for people to keep... Uh, king snakes in an enclosure this large, but I try to, for most of my animals, provide adequate space. Very cool. Yeah. No, I'm cool. No, you're cool? Yeah, I'm alright. <laughs> now, when I was a kid, it wasn't too bad, but I don't know. I don't it's get into good. it now. I'd just rather not. It's like there's a risk involved. I got too much to lose. What? I'm He's... just kidding. <laughs> 
<laughs> I know he ain't gonna bite me. I just don't. It's just too much for me right now. It's yeah, been it's a long, fun. long night and day already. over to the right we've got another aquarium that is as old as the hills I don't know how old it was this was actually my first uh, put quotes in it monster fish tank uh, anything bigger than 55 I kind of tend to think is think of as a large aquarium but this is a 90 gallon I got it on Craigslist just like that other one and uh, I've had it for pretty much the entire length that I've been in the aquarium hobby and what you're seeing here are two brown bullhead catfish got a really nice coloration about them and that was one of the draws like one of the reasons why I went to get them but this is a native just cold water fish tank and uh, it's battling with some algae right now because I just recently set up this tank and it's still uh, getting acclimated and everything so I'm trying to dial in on the care for it right now with the fertilization and everything and there's also two sunfish in here I don't, yeah, you're looking at that one right now. That's a southern long ear sunfish. Uh, definitely look up a picture of them. They're beautiful fish. And then this is a green sunfish. They're not as nice of a looking fish, but they have a huge personality, like similar to an Oscar, but not nearly as temperamental. Uh, so I actually got into keeping natives by accident. I used to have a snapping turtle when I'd buy feeder or like the feeder fish for it. A sunfish came in with them and I'm like I, I can't feed that to my turtle I got to keep it and then uh, from there I got I got to liking native fish so I always got to have them in my collection I love it these guys will get pretty large though this aquarium's not gonna not gonna hold them for too long otherwise they'll be a tank buster yeah, I <laughs> love the pattern on them like the speckled uh-huh I believe it's called molting molting okay very cool. All right, now. And over here is <laughs> some real artwork. Yeah, over here. So this is all custom built, 100% DIY. Hold this on is... a second. Let me flip you over. Right. Cause... You good? All right, moving over here. This is kind of like, uh, I consider this to be one of my best works currently. This is all DIY, custom built plywood enclosures. Now it's three of them, but I built them in a way that it looks like a single unit. Uh, up top here. Two bioactive setups, if you're not familiar with what bioactive is, basically uh, use detritivores, basic, they're little, they it could be anything really, but uh, isopods, springtails, various little critters that will decompose the leaf litter down here or dead plants, the animal's waste, and in doing so, they re release nutrients back into the substrate for all of the plants. And it's basically a self-sustaining environment, basically replicating nature. And uh, that's how I like to keep most of my reptiles and amphibians. In here I have a crested gecko. He's back in the upper left, Henry. He was a adoptee. I had a friend that didn't want to keep him or actually I think it was his brother that had him and didn't want to keep him. And uh, he knows I'm into animals, so he gave him to me. And I've had them for about four years and with crested geckos they can drop their tail but if they do it won't grow back just a few months back I was handling them and I, I felt a sneeze coming on I couldn't couldn't fight it so I sneezed and he actually dropped his tail oh when my I goodness. sneezed wow yeah. that's <laughs> crazy just scared him and uh -huh. dropped his tail wow uh -huh. you're that sensitive yeah cause like I wasn't I wasn't by the enclosure so I couldn't hurt like i didn't want to run to try to get him back in so i'm like just trying to fight this sneeze and uh i have a pretty oh obnoxious goodness. sneeze so and you them. culture all those little bugs you're talking about too yeah i do um okay cool that you brought that up because i actually have several cultures down here this is just springtails and they're little little arthropod and that's charcoal yeah just plain old uh lump wood charcoal like you'd use for your grill and they eat off of it 
Uh, they don't eat off of it. That's basically, um, I guess in terms of like aquarium stuff, think of it almost as like the biological media, like a okay. ceramic ring or whatever they colonize yeah, on yeah. it. And the reason why I like to use a charcoal culture as opposed to say just like substrate is it creates more surface area for them to live on. So there's all the nooks and crannies yeah. throughout here. But what I feed them is this uh, nutritional yeast. Just sprinkle a little bit in, in there once a week. And, That's why uh, I feed Daphne. Uh-huh. It's, yeah. it's great. Super cheap. Nice. It's kind of hard to find, but if you can get it, it's the way to go. Um, same deal over here. We got another crested gecko. I don't know if you'll be able to find Let's her in here, see. but... And both of these setups up top, each of them has at least a good 20, 20 varieties of plants or so. I know she's in here. There she is. Right back <laughs> there. Yeah. <laughs> and this uh, pothos, I don't know if you see I got pothos in here. That's like a lot of people use it for good filtration on aquariums. Mm -hmm. uh, it's great plant for these larger animals because it just grows like a weed and it's pretty uh pretty durable it's a beautiful cabinet thank you and this bottom thing <laughs> yeah so this wow this bottom one i actually originally built this for houdini but i uh as lucas was saying like i just got to not liking that other setup that much because i felt like i couldn't appreciate it because of the glass with this it's like full visibility you could just look in here and appreciate it and there's a lot of um this is 180 gallons by the way but it's still it's still work in progress i'm getting all the plants going but there's a decent amount of aquarium plants in here we've got java moss up here and here uh this is some flame moss i actually have a um Oh, help me Bucha out. Bucha flame? Yeah, thing. yeah, boost. I couldn't, I don't know, it slipped in my mind a for buca, a second. or people call it all kinds of different <laughs> names now. Yeah, but uh, it, it took a beating. Uh, it's starting to come back. Though. I got various Anubias in here. These are getting popular in the hobby now, too, the airplanes. Yeah, yeah a lot of people use them for those uh, immersed or paludarium type setups. Um, they're pr pretty easy to care for. You just got to know how to water them. Is that a Nubius back there, it looks like? Uh, right here? Yeah. Yep. This oh, is, yeah, more all over the place. Yeah, and uh, when I first set this up, I was having issues keeping the temperature right, so it kind of died off. But this was like this Anubius right here. I've had that for about 12 years, and all of these other Anubius came hmm. from it. Okay. So that's, I think that's kind of cool. Very uh, cool. Like everything's natural from like the wall, everything around, and the uh -huh. leaf litter. This leaf litter is just such a nice touch, where you have the husk and the big uh -huh. seeds and. I like with these how the the moss, you get that moss like growing around. Yeah, it. and that looks completely natural. You know, like it hit the ground from way high up in the tree and then it got moved and mm -hmm. is that actually like a bowl looks like a uh, like a shell or it's something it's a um a brazil nut pod okay what is this that i don't know what it <laughs> i have no idea i got it in an enigma pack from tannin and i can't think of what it is but i it's really cool i put yeah, a little bit is. of moss and there's like there. so many little touches to this like uh -huh. it's in there there's like a log here I don't know if you With know what wood, a... wood, there's sticks through here. Do you know what a uh, maidenhair fern is? Uh-uh. Well, that, if you look here, there's just all these little oh, guys popping them. up. Yeah. It's a very impressive plant when it when it gets big, but it's very temperamental. So uh, if you ever come back, that that will be a pretty cool looking plant. Okay. I also got Pelia, the, the liverwort yeah. here. It's, I was kind of experimenting with it, and it took a beating just kind of getting acclimated but if if i keep it moist it seems to be doing quite well and how do you keep them wet you got a mister or do you do yeah. it all manually i do yeah i do it all manual misting right now uh i like to do a lot of people will comment saying that i should get an automatic mister and i want one but 
my beef with it, I guess, is that I can't direct the um, spray to specific areas because it's like all of the moss I right. spray a lot. Some of these air plants, they just get a little like. You can get better direct hits on the ones uh -huh. you want. Yeah, and that it's makes sense. more work, but uh, I think the results, the results are worth it. This is an orchid. It's not flowering right now. This is. Uh no, this right or here. Oh, that is. Yeah, okay. and it's not. Um, there's all kinds of crazy cool plants in here. Yeah, there's a good. I don't know. I'd say easily thirty different varieties of plants in here. What's this one? I like this that one. That is Peperomia confilotropa. Peperonia? Peperomia. <laughs> Looks like pepperoni. <laughs> Green pepperoni. Green pepperoni. But, oh, that's cool. I just love that little, uh -huh. like, just a little accent there. Right? That actually came from my first vivarium. It was, like, a 20-gallon. And uh, later, it, I made that 125. And that, that piece has been around for, for quite a while. But I love it. That's cool. Very and, cool. And? All right. So moving over, we've got another custom-built plywood, or plywood, I'm used to talking about plywood, a custom-built stand. And I actually got the idea for this stand from Aquarium Co-op. He did those 125 racks where it kind of like concealed. But I really like that look, so uh, I went and did that for these 40 gallons. But now, there's only one on here, but it will be set up with three 40-gallon paludariums. One for MJ, who you saw earlier, he's going to be on the bottom. And then I have an African bullfrog here, we can pull him out for like do some b-roll of him but uh he's he's pretty cool and he'll have himself a nice paludarium as well in here i've got three fire belly toads and they are what was living in that tank that you like the 125 you're probably not gonna be able to see them we can pull them out and do some b-roll they're gonna be moving down into here and this is my latest i've been working on this for a good four or five months uh and it definitely went by the back burner just since we we're moving and everything but it's similar to the vivarium it's got all live plants and uh, a little water feature and I just I really like how it turned out but uh, this this is considered a paludarium what a paludarium is is it's essentially a vivarium with a focus on a water feature so you can have a vivarium with a water feature and it's still considered a vivarium but something like this is definitely more a paludarium so it's definitely like a gray area with it but it's basically a combination of an aquarium and a terrarium so now that leads the question what is the difference between a terrarium and a vivarium well mm -hmm. a, a vivarium is a terrarium but a terrarium isn't a vivarium so it, it's, it's like kind of a mess but basically what a vivarium is is it's a terrarium meant for keeping and observing animals so all of these setups that I call vivariums, they have animals in them. Whereas like a terrarium, it's more of the traditional closed bottle with just plants in it. Um, but in a nutshell, that's the difference between the three. That makes sense, okay. I was wondering the <laughs> difference between a vivarium and a terrarium. Uh huh. And then it, you got the paludarium and then you got aquarium. Yeah, yeah. Then you got all that leaf litter and cool leaf litter and stuff uh -huh. in here as well. I love it. Yeah. So with this, I kind of want to get, um, I don't, I'm, I'm tempted to keep shrimp in here. I don't really, and possibly fish. I don't really think the fire belly toads would be able to, uh, get them if they're among the leaf litter and everything. So I'm kind of trying to get that nice natural look with it as well as the functionality of it. Uh, but yeah, we got various leaves and things in here and then i have uh what is this uh morpelia this is uh help me out here water, water wisteria sprite. or what is a water sprite yeah water wisteria yeah um and so if you see how it looks now that's the underwater growth but as it grows out of the water it's going to get more like standard looking leaves so i thought that would be cool and uh we have a lot of like terrestrial type plants growing in the water so i have like purple waffle plant back there it does really well actually if you grow it yeah that's the stuff they try to sell you at petco for <laughs> an aquarium plant yeah it, it's not good 
submerged, but <laughs> if you have it like growing out of water. This is a uh, Wendelof fern. This one? Yeah, Java fern back there. Oh, it's this. Yes. Uh, this is a kangaroo fern, actually. Looks, okay, it's looks a, a lot like the Wendelof. I, wa I have Java ferns though that I want to grow in here out of the or like partially in the water out of the water this is a blue rabbit's foot fern it has these cool little fuzzy rhizomes oh on it. yeah that's wild huh um again got oak leaf creeping fig some anubius i, I think these are just standard barter eye uh this is lancifolia so it's gonna grow pretty pretty tall but i thought that would be a cool spot for it then we just got the petites you can see all the new, new strong growth on it here, nice and bright. It's coming together. Oh yeah, definitely. Looking good, looking good. No, we're just talking about this real quickly. It's just a 55 gallon setup. Got some common and comet goldfish in here. In case you didn't know, that's. Comet goldfish are not, it's not the same fish. The comets have the long finnage and then the commons have the standard finnage. Now this one's looking pretty rough. Um, I had them outside along with several other goldfish, but it got too cold too fast and they ended up dying. And this one, that big one took quite a beating, but I got this nice patch of pothos up top here. Yeah, that's nice. So I think what I'm gonna do is move them into the garage for the winter just so it's not as drastic uh because i i really do like these fish and i don't want i don't want to lose them all so rather than take the risk i'm probably just gonna go put them in the garage for the season because i just built a pond out back it's like I, I was trying to do the right thing by putting them in a, a bigger pond and everything and then it ended up backfiring unfortunately so i'll probably get some more goldfish possibly the uh shubuankin the ones that are like black, orange, and white. That's probably like my favorite goldfish uh, to live with these. So I think it'd be pretty cool. That would be cool. This is all, that's all custom built too. And this is custom built too, isn't it? Yeah, are you still, are you still filming? You painted, yeah, did you paint all this? Yeah, this is all painting. I have wow. uh, time-lapse videos of this. Uh, there's actually, there's one on the side here That's as well. very, very nicely done. Thank you. Look at the detail on these leaves. It looks real. That is crazy, especially on this camera. And yeah, this one, it's like a cool, kind of like brook. Very cool. And this is another one that I'm working on for the other side. Maybe I'll finish it eventually. <laughs> it's been going on since like February. Uh... And yeah, you said you were into art before you got into this hobby, right? Well, or sort of. I mean, like, I've been doing art since I was really young. Uh, to sidetrack, if you don't know how to draw and you want to learn how to draw, trace. That's how I got good at drawing, was, like, learning how to trace, because it kind of trains you to follow the lines. Um, but yeah, I started out with art, and then eventually I worked into these sort of scapes and things like that. So uh, it, it all goes hand in hand, really. Um, but yeah, this is all, this entire set, other than the aquarium itself, it's all DIY, so DIY light fixture, uh, DIY sump, I got a pretty extensive video on that, this is just a, yeah, it's a serious sump, <laughs> 40 gallon breeder, the stand is DIY, and then in this aquarium, uh, it's like all overflowed down into the sump, I got a Stockman standpipes on the back here to kind of soften the sound a little bit and uh this is just like a community tank i've got eight silver dollar tetras uh 16 giant danios they're kind of like the star of the aquarium although they're kind of like a common fish they do get some nice colorations and they just have that big personality a cool school that uh i like in this tank like that that high energy um what else do I have? I also have five emerald quarries, two bristlenose catfish, or uh, plecos, rather. I have some more sunfish in here, but they're growing out. And I have several gourami. I have 
four or five pearls and then one snake skin. I also have a big lace catfish. I don't know if you see, there's three of them. They're about oh, yeah. seven inches long. Over right? here underneath the wood. Uh-huh. You like those, right? Oh, yeah. I've had some of those in my 180. I kept them, kept shrimp with them. Really? Yeah. The Neos? Yeah, orange ones. They didn't eat them. Well, I, they just colonize really well. They okay. colonize like ants. Yeah, yeah. When I realized after the uh, 180 busted a leak that they can actually dig tunnels under rocks. Interesting. That's a, I just, uh, this this aquarium is some fish keeper's nightmare just because I keep so, so many different types of fish in there. But uh, for me, I don't know, it's cool. It's fun to watch, fun to look at. Slightly cloudy right now. I just cleaned out the sump, so I'm thinking that had something to do with it, unfortunately. But uh, the long term plan with this is not to have it set up as it is. I was telling Lucas that I want to do a cool planted tank in here. Um, possibly I could do maybe a paludarium where it's more so water, so it's like this much water, and then the rest is air with like some cool air plants and stuff. Maybe some archer fish, that would be like... Oh, that would be cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm also... I was uh, telling him that uh, Black Coast Knife, that's like my all-time favorite fish. I don't know why, but uh, I, w I would definitely love to get one for in here with like a cool planted setup. Okay, moving on to the next... Good. Yeah. All right, so the last official setup that I have in here is this 10-gallon aquarium, and it actually features a terrarium inside of the aquarium. It's not doing so well. I need to get in there and possibly redo it or uh, just do, do something different. Maybe I would make an, an aquarium in there or potentially take the, the cap off of the jar and uh, have it almost like the terrarium goes into the jar. I don't know. I've got to do something with it, but I've got... Uh, three Amano shrimp in here. I don't know if you can see any of them right now. Oh uh, yeah, there's one with a little molt. Molt, yep. So we've got Boos, Anubius, some moss balls, nice patch of Pelia. Uh, I love this crypt Bronze right here. Crypt. Yep. Little, okay. little, uh, help me out here. Obidus. Yeah. Couldn't think of what it was snails and stuff and then we don't know what this plant is i don't know if any of no, you guys can really give an id neat. i got it at uh some some local fish store they i got it in there by accident with some plants but i thought it was pretty cool and i also got some uh hydro sunset here pretty cool you can't really get that though very beautiful and then I, I wish it was as red as it had been, but I just got the dwarf aquarium lily in here. When I first brought this tank over to this house, it was like red, red. Like if you go into Microsoft Paint and you get the default red, that's how it looked. But mm -hmm. uh, it's not really bl blushing right now how it was. I love how organized you are down here. Uh, <laughs> thanks. It's uh, a little bit chaotic, but whenever I'm working on videos and everything, I try to keep stuff as streamlined as possible. And to just have everything labeled and in a nice area like this, it just really helps to streamline anything. And I mean, you know how it is. You keep oh, yeah. 200 plus aquariums. If it's not set up well. Yeah, organization <laughs> is key. I love the mono shrimp though. They're not a, not a cool looking shrimp per se, but they just have really cool personalities. It's fun to watch them uh, dig all over everything, but... I like this setup. Awesome. So over here, I've got, uh, norm normally this is on a rack, but it's a lot of my grout tanks. Uh, this is actually just a big bin of Java moss. I use it in aquariums, to everything, so it's good to have. This is various terrestrial mosses, so I've got some sphagnum here, uh, pillow hair cap. And then over here, these are some of my microfauna. Uh, here, I'll grab this bin right here this is uh some armadillidium vulgaria just the common pill bug but it's an orange variety hmm. oh. oh i found some of them in my yard i was like yeah why do we have gold 
Fill bugs. So what I did is I uh, collected a bunch of... I actually got these from outside. I collected a bunch of orange ones. And I'm just kind of uh, trying to selectively breed them out. A.K.A. Rolly Pulleys. Yep, Rolly Pulleys, Pill Bugs, Wood Louse. Go by many names. Usually isopods in the uh, bioactive community. And then, yeah, I got various uh, garden millipedes, skirted isopod, common pill bug, which is basically the same as what you just saw, but the gray, gray variety. We've got a wandering Jew over here. This is a great uh, paludarium plant. It will grow in water, out of water, and it grows like a weed and looks pretty cool too. We got a lot of plants going on in here. Yeah, a lot of plants going on in there. Uh, this is a type of variegated pothos. Uh, the heck, some. And do you give this light? How long does this? Uh, well, like right, this? right now it doesn't have light, but normally I just have it on a normal like. Uh, I think I do six hours a day on it, just like a standard LED mm. shop light, nothing special. Uh, roaches in here, more isopods in here. Big thing of springtails down there. Nice. <laughs> All right, so there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed this tour. Lots going on in here. You want more information, check out Serpa Design. He's got all kinds of cool stuff going on. And any last words you got for him? Uh, pretty much everything that you saw, I have extensive tutorials on. So if you want to know how I made these plywood setups or how I set up any of this stuff, just check out my channel. I have, I mean, I try to make the most well thought out presentations i can so that you can do this kind of thing yourself and uh really this type of stuff that you see myself do or lucas do you can do it too but you just gotta make sure that if you get into this stuff make sure that it's what you like doing because it's gonna consume you to some extent and if you're not ready to like deal with that uh it's not a good thing because then you end up just getting rid of everything so make sure it's what you like doing before you go. Or you become addicted like us, and <laughs> well, this is what happens. <laughs> you get that multiple tank syndrome. Yeah, MTS. I mean, you know what, though? Who even keeps one aquarium, though? If you keep, who does that? Yeah, right. <laughs> Once you're in, you're in. Yes. Uh, awesome. Well, I appreciate it, Tanner. Thank you so much for course. having me. All right, everybody. Till next time. All right. Peace. Peace out.